How would you feel if you had a strange conversation with your daughter, then just a few hours later, the police would find her burning next to her car? Indeed, this is the absolutely horrifying reality of Jessica Chambers, who in 2014 was set on fire in Cortland, Mississippi. Eight years later, the police still aren't sure who the murderer is, and Jessica's horrific death still haunts her family. Today, we will be exploring her case. Jessica Chambers was born on February 2nd, 1995, and raised by her parents, Ben and Lisa, in a tiny town of 500 people called Cortland, Mississippi. It might sound like a quiet, peaceful town, but Jessica's life was far from peaceful. In the early 2000s, her father was arrested for manufacturing crystal and driving under the influence. She saw her neighbor get shot in her yard, and her older brother died in a car accident in 2012. Jessica's teenage years were a tough time, but she kept her chin high and her ambitions big. In high school, she was a popular cheerleader, and her marks were only A's and B's. After graduating high school, Jessica began working in a clothing store in Batesville. Some people around Jessica commented that she surrounded herself with a fairly rough crowd. Fast forward to December 6th, 2014, Jessica's spent the morning with two of her friends. Then she went to her mother's house and took a nap. Later in the afternoon, she received a text and left the house, telling Lisa she was going to get something to eat and then clean her car. At around 5.30 p.m., she went to a gas station, then to nearby Batesville. She then returned to Cortland around 6.30. About 15 minutes later, Jessica called her mom and Lisa noticed something was off. Both Jessica and the background were very quiet. This was the last time Lisa heard her daughter. At 8.10 p.m., a passing motorist saw something that remained ingrained in his memory forever. A burning girl stumbling into a roadside ditch, burned to a crisp but still alive. This was Jessica Chambers. The motorist immediately called 911, and when the police arrived at the scene, Jessica was still alive. Her black car had been burned so badly, it had turned white, and Jessica had severe burns, covering 98% of her body. She had been blinded, and her clothes had been incinerated. When a firefighter arrived at the scene, he didn't recognize Jessica, who he had gone to school with. She barely looked human anymore. Someone had poured gasoline all over her body, down her throat, and up her nose. When the emergency services rescued Jessica and tried to treat her, she said something like Eric or Derek set me on fire. She was taken to Memphis Hospital, but no doctor could save Jessica from the horrific state she was in. She died the next day, on December 7th, holding her mother's hand. The car with the blue tarp over the top, it will be used as evidence when someone is arrested. Meantime, friends and family are still trying to cope with the loss of 19-year-old Jessica Chambers. Indeed, Jessica's family tried to push back the absolute shock of what had happened and focus on helping the police find Jessica's killer, but that was easier said than done. The police went around Cortland and Batesville and interrogated anyone called Eric or Derek, but no one was even close to being a suspect. Jessica's boyfriend Travis was also ruled out as a suspect as he was in jail at the time. Jessica's dad was working as a mechanic at the sheriff's department at that time, and Jessica's uncle even turned up to the crime scene, wanting to see what had happened and cooperate with the police. But I had to, I had to see. While the case was obviously a homicide, the police were at a loss as to who might have done this horrific act. They retrieved any objects they could find that belonged to Jessica, her car keys, which were down the road, and her cell phone. The police went on to examine Jessica's cell phone in order to track her movements on December 6th and create a timeline of the events prior to her death. They concluded the events list as follows. Jessica met with her friends in the morning, then saw her mom, then left home when she got a text. Drove to the gas station where she bought $14 worth of gas, then drove to Batesville, then back to her hometown where she met her tragic end. The biggest mystery perhaps is what Jessica was doing in Batesville, as clearly she wasn't working that day and she was only there for about half an hour. The police tried to figure out whether Jessica was involved in any rings as she had previously expressed concern for her friends to her father. She told her father about a dozen times that everyone thought she was snitching because he worked for the police. Clearly Jessica was involved in the wrong crowd and at least her friends had connections to drug sellers. Still grasping at straws, the police put out a reward of $54,000 for anyone who could bring relevant information for Jessica's case. They interviewed about 150 people, but got little to no valuable information. 
Two years had passed since Jessica's horrifying death. Her family was still hoping to bring some justice for their daughter and sister, but were prepared for abandoning hope. In February 2016, however, the police made a breakthrough. Quinton Tellis was indicted on capital murder charge in Jessica's death. He had prior convictions for burglary, possession, and fleeing from the police. In 2015, he had been arrested for the murder of Ming Chen Sao, a young Taiwanese student at the University of Louisiana. Tellus was caught using her credit cards after her death, thus arrested, but the police couldn't prove that Tellus did take the young woman's life. As soon as the police made the arrest, Jessica's family was notified, and the press rushed to hear their thoughts. Whatever he gets, he deserves. And you know, and I, and I feel sorry for his family, his family got to go through a lot of, lot, lot of problems, you know. He not only destroyed our family, he's hurt his family. Both Jessica's parents were overwhelmed by the police arresting a suspect and glad the police hadn't given up on finding Jessica's killer. Indeed, the police went on to thoroughly study Tellus's past. He was involved with a rap that served time in prison and had strong drug affiliations, but none of these could be linked in any way to Jessica Chambers. Eight months after Jessica's death, Tellus had a meeting with his probation officer that he didn't attend. Soon after, he married a woman called Takeda Jackson and the two moved to Monroe, Louisiana. In 2015, Tellus is seen on security footage in Walmart interacting with Meng Chen. A neighbor gave the police Tellus's license plate number. After Meng Chen told him Tellus had given her her a creepy feeling. The same neighbor witnessed Tellus coming to Meng Chen's apartment, then heard the two arguing right before the day she went missing. Ten days later, she was found dead in her apartment. She had been stabbed several times. Shortly after, Tellus was caught trying to use Meng Chen's card and was arrested for her murder. He hasn't been convicted yet, as the trial is still on hold until the trial for Jessica's murder is resolved. Ironically and tragically enough, neither of these trials have been concluded to this day. The police connected Tellus to Jessica through his phone. The two had known each other for a few weeks and apparently were romantically involved too. Tellus was the last person who texted Jessica on the day she so horrifically died. So when Tellus was arrested and interrogated, he kept changing his story. Initially, he said he hadn't seen Jessica on December 6th at all. Then he claimed he was with her that day, but only in the morning. He said he was at a store in Batesville at the time of Jessica's murder, so he couldn't have been with her. The police checked the CCTV footage at the store and found Tellus inside the store at 8.26 p.m., over 15 minutes after the fire was discovered by the motorist. Moreover, location data from Tellus and Jessica's cell phones shows that the two were together until around 7.30 p.m. Of course, when this information was revealed to Tellus, he changed his story again, and he said he actually was with Jessica, but only until 7 p.m. before his friend Big Mike picked him up and they went to his place. Big Mike, however, said he was at a football game in Nashville that night, nowhere near Tellus. His alibi was once again reduced to ashes. Nevertheless, Tellus was an endless source of lies. Now telling police, Jessica picked him up that evening and they went together to a Taco Bell in Batesville. Then they went to his house and listened to music in the driveway with Jessica leaving around 7 p.m. But of course, the police already had Jessica's cell phone location data and knew she didn't go anywhere at seven. In fact, she left Batesville at 7.30 and drove to the location where she was found burning. You know what's bad is I want to believe you as a person, a person man, and the man I want to believe, but because of everything we know, I'm sorry, man, I just don't. The police investigator went on to tell Tellus just how far-fetched his stories are, and that he can't expect them to believe Jessica and him were at a house where she died, as there is nothing but road and trees where it happened. Furthermore, Jessica's car keys were found between the crime scene and Tellus's sister's home, and Tellus's DNA was found on the keys. Surveillance footage also shows a car, believed to be Tellus's sisters, stopping by his house at 7.50 p.m before driving towards the crime scene. Finally, CCTV footage shows that Tellus changed his clothes three times during that day. And an hour after Jessica's death, Tellus had deleted all messages to her and stopped communicating with her, even though they had been texting constantly throughout the previous days. The police recovered the messages and found that Tellus repeatedly asked Jessica to have with him, and that she repeatedly denied, including four times on December 6th. If all this is not compelling evidence, I don't know what is. However, Tellus was indicted in 2016, but six years later, the trial for Jessica is far 
from over. When he was arrested, Tellis pleaded not guilty. The prosecutor's theory goes as follows. Tellis tried to have sex with Jessica in his driveway. She refused once again, and enraged, he suffocated her until she passed out. He then drove her car to the area where it was later found, ran to his sister's home, took her car, and picked up the gasoline from his home. He returned to Jessica's car and set it on fire with her inside. According to this theory, Tellus was unaware Jessica was still alive. But during the trial, the firefighter who saw Jessica describes it differently. She was a fighter. I mean, she, she was trying to answer questions. I mean, she was trying to tell us, you know, who she was. Was pretty outstanding if you ask me. In his defense, Tellus pointed towards a registered sex offender called Derek Holmes, as police heard Jessica say Eric or Derek as the killer. But Derek was quickly ruled out as he was at home during the night of the murder, and he had several alibis confirming this. Furthermore, the prosecutors pointed out that Jessica's mouth was severely burned when she presumably said Eric, and this might as well have been Tellus considering she couldn't close her mouth. In November 2016, the jurors reached their verdict. First, it came as not guilty to everyone's shock. Then, it turns out the verdict was not unanimous and that many jurors misunderstood the instructions. I just need to, I don't need to know uh, what your verdict was, but I just need to know, did all 12 jurors agree on that verdict? Yes, sir, we did. All right, would you hand the verdict please to the court, to the clerk, please, excuse me. We all didn't agree on it. Sir? You said we all agreed on that verdict. We did. This resulted in a mistrial. Tellus was tried again in 2018, and again there was a mistrial because of a hung jury. But Tellus isn't home yet. Quentin Tellus will go back to Monroe, Louisiana sometime this week. He'll face murder charges down there for killing a college exchange student in July 2015. Tellus still denies killing the Taiwanese student, but he pleaded guilty for using her credit cards, which earned him 10 years in jail as a habitual offender. He is still charged with Jessica's murder and awaits a third trial, which the prosecutors are discussing with Jessica's family at the moment. The prosecutors argued that they would like for everyone's emotions to simmer down before the third trial. Tellus is due to be released from prison in 2025, but it looks like the trial for Meng Chen will happen before then. If convicted, Tellus will face life in prison with no parole. Until then, all Jessica's family can do is hope that justice will be brought to her one day, while they have to live with the horrifying reality of their daughter's death. Hey, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. See you next time.